The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our gospel reading for this past Sunday, which was our Reformation Sunday. We're looking at John chapter 8, verses 31 to 36, where, where John writes, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus said here, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Jesus is encouraging us to hold on to God's truth, to hold on to God's truth. But what does it mean to hold on to God's truth? Well, really, we could say that holding on to God's truth really em embraces three things. The first is that we know or are always growing in our knowledge of God's word and God's plan of salvation. But now, if you think back to Luther's day, that wasn't something that was so easily done. It wasn't so easily done because, well, people spoke the German language and when they went to church, they heard their services being done in the Latin language. And at that time, I don't know exactly what they had available to them, but they probably had few, if any, opportunities to really study God's Word as a congregation, as a Bible class like we do today. They probably had very few opportunities like that. You pretty much had to go to college or the university if you wanted to do any real Bible study back in Luther's day. But you know, that's not the case today. Your pastor doesn't speak in a foreign language when he's conducting services or doing Bible classes. And if you'd like to participate in a Bible class, well, we do have our regular classes like our, our Sunday morning class. We, we have a ladies Bible class. We have other Bible classes that we'd like to offer, and if you'd like to participate in a class, just let me know and we'll figure out what we can do so that you can study God's Word. If we value the Bible like Luther did, boy, would that be great, would that be wonderful for you, for our church. It, it just would be absolutely wonderful. But now if you think about it, what happened with Luther is that in his early years he didn't have access to the Bible and then later on when he was in college and he went to a library and happened to go to that library, well, God was directing things, of course, and he found the Bible, found a copy of the Bible. Then he took advantage of every opportunity he could to read and study that Bible because of its wonderful message, because of God's truth that was in the scriptures. Oh, may God give us a desire to be like Luther and to have such a strong desire to be growing in our knowledge of God's word and God's plan of salvation for us. Well, secondly, to hold on to God's truth, it means that we also would be teaching what Jesus taught sharing what Jesus taught. And that means that we don't add or subtract from what the Word of God says. We're faithful to the Word of God. We don't change the meaning of what the Word of God has to say because it's God's truth that sets us free. And, well, any untruth or half-truth, that could damage well, our faith and the faith of those that we're maybe trying to share the word of God with. Well, remember when Satan went after Eve back in the Garden of Eden, what he did is he used half-truths to try to tempt her and succeeded. 
And then when Satan went after Jesus and when Jesus was out in the wilderness being tempted by Satan for those 40 days, what happened again there is he used half-truths to try to tempt Jesus. Of course, Jesus never fell to those tricks from Satan. Well, let's diligently study God's word so that we can accurately and faithfully share God's word with others. Thirdly, holding to Jesus' teaching means also that we'll want to work with God's help to live according to what God's word says. Let's remember that the best witness that we make for our Savior it's often not the words that we speak, but it's often the life that we live if we live as humble Christians who confess our sins and with God's help strive to do his will. However, what we also have to remember is that the worst witness that we can make for Christ could also be the life we live if we claim to be Christians, but our actions seem to tell people something otherwise. James said, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. Hold to God's truth. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you grow in your knowledge of God and his word and his plan of salvation, his love for you and keep on sharing the message of God's grace and love with as many people as you can, and, and then look to God for his help to fight against sin, to live as God's believing children. Hold on to God's truth, which sets you free. Sets you free from being afraid of God because of our, your sins, and also, Hold on to that truth because it gives you the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your word that tells us of Jesus, our Savior. Thank you for giving us your truth, God's truth, which sets us free and assures us of heaven because of all that Jesus, our Savior, has done for us. Build up and strengthen our faith so we are always holding on to your truth, to God's truth, which sets us free. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.